Visual illusions, let's, let's just jump right in here. Um, so I guess it's kind of a gimme, but I just want to take a little time. I hope it's clear, or I hope that everyone gets the concept that we are our brains. You know, what we perceive is directly and completely dependent upon our brains. And you might say, well, you know, we're part of our body. Yeah, yeah, I know. But all that, ultimately, it's, our, it's your brain, stupid. Um, it's our brains. Um, and our brains do some pretty fantastic things, and, and they construct a reality for us. Um, like, for example, we see depth Im images on flat screens. Like, you saw a picture of my farm, and you could tell, oh, that's on the background, and you know, that looked like a normal, you could have been looking through a window. Um, we also fill in parts of objects blocked from view. You know, if I'm standing here talking to you, you probably imagined what the rest of me looks like behind there. You know, it, it's pretty easy. Um, and we also automatically categorize the things that we identify in the environment. Uh, for example, you, you, you could see a tiger, but you could see a toy tiger, and you would immediately know the difference between them, even though they have a lot of similarities. Um, and similarly, in kind of the point of this talk is misperceiving objects, misperceiving reality is just built into us. It's just part and parcel of having a brain. Um, and I'm going to show some images and other things, and I hope it speaks for itself. Um, but why should you trust me talking about visual illusions and brains? Fine, I get my PhD, postdoctoral work, I worked in R&D, both sides. In other words, you should trust me because I'm an authority, and that's a joke. For those of you who get it, argument. the argument from authority, thank you very much. Uh, he made me make that joke, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I do. I have cufflinks at home. I should have worn them. I have, I have brains on my cufflinks, actually. Um, so visual illusions have fascinated me since I was eight years old. And it's kind of part of, I guess, why I got into neuroscience. And um, it's now time for a little demonstration. Everyone's going to participate. All right. I want you to take your fingers, OK? And I want you to put them in front of your face and look at your fingers, but look beyond them. Look at the wall or look at the this. Okay, and, and pull your fingers apart a little, just a little bit, and you should see something that looks like this. You see a floating finger, okay? Now, you're seeing it. You're seeing a little floating finger up there, but there's no floating finger up there. The reason you see that is because you have a visual system. You have two eyes, and they're integrating information across there. You got it, Rob? That was weird. I did it the first time. Gone. Well, you got to look at you got to look beyond it. Okay, look at me, look at me, look at me, Rob, look at me, Rob. I have very advanced stereoscopic Well, and so that's actually one of the things I want to make is that you know we all different, we're all wired different, and some of us have different brains, very different brains. And I would like to hear, not necessarily during the talk, but afterwards, if someone goes, that just I don't see that because that's interesting to me. Um, there are, uh, the other thing that interests me besides this kind of stuff is neurological deficits. There are some astonishing neurological deficits. I just learned about one yesterday called, I hope I got it right, anendophasia. These are people who don't have a voice in their head. Oh, I've heard that. Yes, meaning like if I'm reading, we were talking about this, weren't we? Right. If, I'm, if I'm reading, I hear what I'm reading. Or if I'm thinking like, you know, God, what should I say to Coleman? How am I going to remember his name? I mean, that's, I have a dialogue. Not, I don't mean like crazy, like, you know, aliens are talking to me. But there are people who don't have that. I've never heard, that's astonishing. And yet, it's real. Okay. It's kind of like being colorblind, you know, whatever. Um, so, we got the demonstration. Now it's time for a little test. So, looking at this screen, the lines that are going from left to right, you see that they slant, correct? No, you don't. I'll prove it to you by putting some rectangles up there. Okay, you got that? Yeah. All right. Should we do that again? You see how they slant? Yeah. Now, and also, I, I'm not <laughs> nearly sophisticated enough to manipulate these images so that, you know, that I'm faking it. No, they really, they really don't slant. But they appear to because of the the pattern in there. And I will also then step out for a second. Most visual illusions, we don't really know what 
particular part of it is causing it? I mean, you might say, well, it's because the black and the white things are arranged left to right, but like, why is that fooling with your retina or your lateral geniculate nucleus? A lot of illusions are just kind of mysterious, but they tell us something about the brain um, eventually. So there's one. Um, why talk about illusions at Skeptic Camp? This is kind of obvious, I guess. Uh, they reveal our brain's fantastic ability to perceive, but more importantly, they reveal our brain's fallibility. You know, we can perceive something that's not part of external reality. And I hope you like my little bullets there, um, like, you know, the, what is that? What does that look like? <laughs> it's just two dots and a curve. <laughs> We're going to talk about faces later. And how about, do you like this? What's that? Take a guess. Brain coral. brain coral. Of course, you know I was trying to trick you. Exactly. But it sure looks like a brain. And I imagine if I hadn't said what's this, you would have just not even noticed. Um, what I also like about visual illusions is that they're really easily shared. Like it might be kind of hard to share some other concept with somebody who doesn't want to listen. But you just can't deny. Y'all, I don't think one person in this audience failed to see those lines as curved. I mean, I just proved that your brain is fallible, fallible? <laughs> malleable and fallible. I just proved that, and I, it created a new word. Um, so I, I love that, and, and you know, they're easily shared. Anyway. Um, and I think that understanding this fallibility promotes yeah. critical thinking, most importantly, of yourself. You know, I, there, I'll just tell you a real quick story. I was driving down the highway once, and I... Um, this guy blew by me, because of course I'm going the speed limit. And you know, boom, and there were flames coming out from behind his right front side, right, right front, front tire. And I thought, oh my God. So I tromped on the accelerator to catch up with him, tell him, your fucking car's on fire. And if aliens had abducted me and said, what are you doing? I'm telling the truth, do what you want with me, but that guy's car's on fire. Of course I caught up to him. The sun was rising behind, setting behind us, sorry. And he had a chrome mud flap, and it was blowing, and it was loose and blowing in the breeze. Now, I saw flames, but not really. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, and a good thing that, that, that a cop didn't intercept me and pull me over, and I said that, and then they would lock me up yeah, for two reasons. You know, you're crazy and you're speeding. All right. Um, so, also, uh, this is kind of pedantic of me, but I, it's, ha I'm, it's all about the terminology. A visual illusion is different from an optical illusion. Optical illusions reflect effects on beams of light. It's just optics. It's like a lens. Uh, a mirage is a classic example where, you know, a camera can capture uh, an optical illusion. You know, this is just hot air, change of the refraction index of the atmosphere. You seeing the sky as if it's down below. It looks like your brain interprets it as water. That's kind of the visual part of it. Mostly. That's an optical illusion. A rainbow is an optical illusion. There is no arc up there. And sorry, no pot of gold. I don't mean to disappoint anybody, I'm really sorry. Um, you know, th there's no arc there. It's just that you're, you're, you're getting photons from th those regions and they constitute an arc. Um, but it's not really there, it's wherever you're looking. You have to, anyway. So visual illusions, as opposed to optical illusions, require a visual interpreting system. Um, that's our eyes, our brain. And it's interesting, about a third of our brain is involved in vision. Now, I don't mean that a third of your brain is visual cortex. What I mean is, or, or structures, that just means that when you're processing visual, relation, visual information, one third of your brain lights up, like in an fMRI. Uh, we're, we're doing a lot of processing and interpreting and thinking about what's going on. And we're very, very good at finding important stuff like faces, like the face you saw earlier that's not really there. Um, we're really good at recognizing people. We're really good at seeing moving things. We're really good at seeing dangers. Sometimes too good, you know, because we can get fooled, like the flames. Um, what's interesting is AI systems can also experience visual illusions. I'll, I'll show that later. And, and not just AI systems. Um, okay. Part of why we have illusions is that we don't just see something, you know, the bottle or whatever. We see things in context, and that context is not just the visual context, but, you know, what we expect, uh, how we're feeling, 
uh, our experience. You know, if you've never seen a particular kind of tool or animal before, it might be kind of hard to recognize it as what it is. Um, here's a good illusion, I guess. And you can tell which one of those inner squares is darker, right? Rob shaking his head because he's showing off. Um, which one looks, sorry, which one appears? The one on the right. Right, right. 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 And of course, it, it's not. Um, uh, so I just want to run through a couple of illusions that, again, will show you how fantastic your brain is seeing stuff, how fallible it is. Um, please speak up. If you don't see one, I'd love to know about it. Um, so, oops, this automation did not work. That was like a mask for the previous slide to show you that they're, in fact, identical. I, I apologize. Again, not sophisticate with the electronicals. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I, hope, I hope animations work in general on here. Uh, here's another really good one, and I think it's undeniable. Do you see the black dots the, where the corners of the squares? Indeed, they come and go. In fact, I challenge you to focus on one of them. You can't. So just what's that telling you? You're seeing them. You're exactly very intelligent, very rapidly moving ghosts. You're seeing them out of the corner of your eye because your, your phobia is wired a little bit different from the outside. And this is an example of how your visual system inhibits and contrasts things to create, you know, to help you see things better in the middle, but there's a cost. Um, and does anyone not see the black dots? What is burgundy? Oh, God. I see little red just after a wine. Yeah. 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 Have you been drinking any red wine? No. Okay. <laughs> Hang on. Sorry. I'm seeing You're seeing one dot? White. Oh, yeah, you see both as you move away from the black. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but you, you can't focus on a black dot, but you can focus on a white dot. Susan, I see it too. It's yeah. very nuanced, but there's like it's a black, burgundy. gray, and white dot. I'm not, are you seeing burgundy? She's seeing burgundy. Interesting. Are, are the squares burgundy to you, Susan? Yeah. Wow. Anyone else? So what, here, let me explain. So like, if you look here, Anthony, if you look here, out of the corner of your eye. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's the angle. You guys, do you see him over there? Ah, come over to the middle. I would tilt this, but I don't want to break anything. Yeah, angle, that's a good point. Yeah, I, it's probably from the problem of being from the side. Yeah, you got to stand in. Diagonally, it okay, that's interesting. Do you have any, Are you have known to have any other color colorblind issues? Okay. Could it be the hat that you're wearing? <laughs> anyway, so I, I apologize about those of you in the periphery, but I would encourage you to move to the middle if you can. Just or or come up later. We'll look at these. Um, Let's see, so again, there are no black dots. Notice you can't focus on them. Which square is darker, square A or B? Can you see, can you see? A. Which, 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 sorry, which looks darker, A or B? A. I know the right answer, but I'm not You know the answer, but you can't see it. Okay, yeah, all right, well. Uh, and of course, you know what's coming. I'm gonna have a mask come over and show you that those are in fact the same color, and no trickery. We have a physical print out of this. Uh, I, I have physical prints of some of these things that we can look at later, and I'll do that. We'll do that one again. Okay, really? Ready? Okay, we'll do that one again. And I swear, no trickery. A or B? They're both the same. Um, yeah, and you can't help it. If you has anybody not see those as that one is darker. You see a gradation? Yeah, it does, sort of but when you saw the square come over, the square is obviously the right color. Look at that. Yeah, it's going from A to B. 
Oh, it still looks like a gradation, but yeah. you can tell that, in fact, this is the same color as that, because it ain't but one square. That I don't see. I see. There's only one square. I, I know. I see darker. Right, because you're, you're still seeing the ex yeah. external concept, yeah. context, even though you know. Uh, yeah. I think the longer you leave it there, the longer your brain adapts to something badly like it did the first time. Right? And let's look at it more later, because I only have so much time. All right. Which red bar is longer? Oh, sorry. Is this bar the same length as that bar? Well, you know what's coming. I'm just going to move along here. Um, oops. Hello. There we go. This is great. They're, of course, the same length. It's just a matter of you, you're inferring depth that is not there. And we can do that one again. Same. Can you see blue rocks? Yeah. Well, I, I presume, yeah. So. <laughs> Do you see the white triangle and the blue circle? Yes. No, you don't. <laughs> because uh, there is no white triangle. There, there is no white triangle, Susan. There are some black shapes up there, but there's no black. Yeah, and, there, and there's no blue circle. Do you see the red leaves moving? How do you know I didn't just put up some GIF? Would that, would that be a moving thing? <laughs> I wouldn't lie to you. Yet. Thank you very much, Sue. But yeah, and this is a static picture, and you know the leaves are not moving. And and again, I hope I don't. That's visible from the side. And and this one, no, because your because your of your color thing. You, you, this works best with people with normal vision. So sorry, sorry, Rob. Um, and wow, my mouse doesn't like to click. What's going on here? Oh, that's a good thing. Uh, do you see these blue and these green bars? Yes. No, you don't. They're all the same color. I'm going to bring in some masks to, oh, to prove it to you. That's amazing. Ta-da. Same color. And again, no trickery. They're the same color. We'll do that again. I think we can do it again. Just watch as the colors suddenly become the same to you. It's because we're taking out the context, taking out the context. And uh, Rob, these may not work for you. I don't know. I apologize. I apologize. Well, and of course, this is a really good example of how you might say, look, I saw this thing and Rob, <laughs> I saw this thing and I, I thought it looked like Jeff, but I couldn't tell. Um, this would be a good example of how if somebody said, you know, oh, I saw that, you know, there was the green car, the blue car. And you're like, no, you didn't. Well, maybe you're both right because your brain is different. Yeah. Now, um, look at this little square in the middle. Just stare at that. Do not take your eyes off of it and watch as the colored blobs disappear. Look at the black X in the middle. Look at the black cross. Until the square becomes gray. Just stare. They go away. They go away. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So, not only do you see colors that aren't there, you don't see colors that are there. And yet, your brain is, you're presumably sober and awake. And uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you gotta, you, you gotta have a fixedly stare at that thing. Do not, do not look away from the cross. Keep, just keep a pension, yeah, it may be hard. Uh, but if you, if you can stare at that and then just like in the, in the corner of your eye. So, as I, as I pointed out before, we're very good at seeing faces, uh, even where there are none, and this is called pareidolia, uh, and it happens in scientific work too. I don't remember what particular image this was, but it's, for, it's a Hubble space coat, and, and of course we all see the smiling universe welcoming yeah. us with all of its life forms and intelligence. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, look at the guys. Here's some more examples of pareidolia. Yeah. I, I love these. You can't help it. There are faces. Well, again, not people who are face blind, uh, but there are people who, but I mean, most of us see faces there. Oh, like you can't not see them. I didn't think about people that, like facial recognition blindness can't see these. Yeah, no. Uh, what's his name? Um, British uh, uh, writer. Uh, who? Oliver, Oliver Sacks would, doesn't see faces. Oh, wow. Um, and what, what I. Says. Yeah, huh? Oliver Sacks definitely doesn't see faces. Yeah, no wonder he can't see faces. Yeah. So there seems to be a lot of, am, am I losing the audience here? I didn't, don't pass those around while I'm talking. No, don't pass them around while I'm talking. 10 minutes, we're fine, we're fine. Now, uh-huh. 
Toast. Yes, I, I would have put the Jesus toast up there, but I didn't. Um, so, but I want you, in particular, this, this, this one. Um, if you look at it, you know, in one way, a detail, you see it's a woman in front of a mirror. You know, if you kind of look at it fuzzier from the side, it, it looks really creepy. And so what's also interesting about that image is that we get like a, a feeling, you know, like we're, in, we're, we're seeing uh, something in that face. Um, and so in addition to seeing faces, audience, this is a really unruly audience. Um, uh, no, I don't. <laughs> or a yam. Um, They're not we see not just faces, but we can see emotion in faces. I love it. Uh, let's see. Yeah. There we go. Um, so what, what do you see here? I see a That's an angry chair. That's right. <laughs> That's a disgusted washer <laughs> playing. Yep. That's a surprise barn. And I, and I love that, that, that. I get this at home all the time. You know, he's angry. Or she, surprised. Surprised. yeah, and surprised, yeah. So you can do that. And go home. Well, no, I don't know. I don't. I don't judge. You know, I don't judge. Who gets the plot anyway? Um, so, and not only humans visit uh, can see illusions, but here's an example of a non-human experiencing, I would say, a, an illusion. <gasps> Looks like grass. <laughs> Must be grass. Uh, huh? Uh, well, let's put it this way. If the grass looks gray when it's on the ground, it's looking gray when it's on the truck. Oh, that, makes sense. that makes sense. Thank you. Um, and uh, how are we? Oh, yeah. Do you see how those figures rotate? This one doesn't work really well for me, which is great. For, well, I'm really glad because this is one of. Yeah. This is one of the illusions that AI thinks is rotating. Uh, yeah, this, this was detected as a rotating image by, and I, don't ask me which one. I'll have to go find the reference. But I think that's really interesting that some image processing software has gotten so sophisticated that they're mirroring our illusions. Yeah. So, in summary, we see with our fallible brains we all normally experience illusions, and there's more than just visual illusions, there's auditory illusions. By that I mean, so not echo, that would be like an acoustic thing, but an auditory illusion, and I hope we have time, I got one coming. Um, there are cognitive illusions, meaning overconfidence, company, all right. Uh, the idea is to acknowledge these in, our, in, in, in ourselves and others, um, and have, to have fun with it. You know, when you've been wrong about a perception, and notice that I see birds flying all the time, when I'm driving, and of course it's just a fly in the window, but over here, and for some reason I think that's a crow out of the corner of my eye because it's black and moving, because I've spent a lot of time outside and we've got crows on our farm. Anyway, uh, it, it, it's, it's kind of interesting to notice how many times a day you have an illusion. Yeah, it's just, it's normal. Uh, and of course we practice appropriate skepticism. Everyone is fallible and could be wrong, including me. Um, you know, question, <laughs> I said could. Could, okay, all right. It's like, it's like the calculation, <laughs> could, possible life, could be wrong. All right. um, and finally, <laughs> this one works really well for me. Do you, does everybody see the lines moving? And of course, I mean, I can, you know, they're not moving. They're just, it's just how we're wired. Can't help it. Uh, and finally, let's have a little bit of fun that says it all. So, are you sure you don't hear rotating pirate ships? Or, do you hear, <laughs> that isn't my receipt? <laughs> I love that guy. This is the power of suggestion. Just maybe we'll it is the power of suggestion. And then, and then the la the the la the la the monsters in motion. Surely not. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Just out of a casual chat, chance, eh? So. Uh, 
the, the obvious question a lot of people have is, what are they really saying? Yeah, what is it? And I would say, what does it matter? <laughs> but let's be good skeptics and, or, yeah, investigators and figure it out. Okay, that sounded like, was that one person? It sounded like people saying. It, wait, wait, was it one person? No, no. It was a crowd. Yeah. No. Okay. I don't know if it, I detected kind of an accent in there. Yeah. Like, what kind of accent? German? British. British. Okay, what would be a large British crowd chanting all together? Soccer. A soccer match. Okay, what could have happened among the ones that they played there that would correspond to something that a British soccer match crowd would say? It was actually, that was embarrassing. That was embarrassing. <laughs> Probably because there was an own goal. Yeah. Exactly. So, but I don't know. Someone here will look it up. I Kenny. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, was that it? Yeah. Oh, oh, we're done? No, no, no. Uh, yeah. How, do I have time? This should work. Now, I really need this crowd to pay attention and zip it, okay? And not move and don't breathe. Just sit still. Um, I'm going to show you a test. If you know what this is, if you've seen it or heard it before, please STFU. Yeah. Did I get that right? Is that what that stands for? I'm just kidding. Um, uh, yeah, okay, because don't ruin it for anybody else. You have to concentrate. It involves some counting. Okay. It involves counting in your head. Feel free to put a hand over your mouth so that your efforts or frustrations don't distract your classmates. So I just classed everybody up. Um, here we go. All right? Okay. This is a test of selective attention. Count how many times the players wearing white pass the basketball. How many passes did you count? 13. 14. The correct answer is 15 passes. But did you see the gorilla? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to pause it right there just because that was the point. Uh, how many people did not see the gorilla the first time through? Raise your hand. Come on, be honest. The first time through. How many people did not see the gorilla? The first time we've ever seen it. The first, okay, the first time you've ever seen it. So we got one, two, three, four, five, five, six. Eight. First time you ever saw the video. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's half the class, including this guy. Um, I couldn't believe, I almost fell out of my chair when I saw the second part, because that is the same video just played back. I was focusing on those passes, man, I'm going to see those passes. Did not see the gorilla. That is just unbelievable. It is. And yet that is very normal. And so that's like a great illusion of, I saw, you know, I would have seen it. I saw everything. No. No, you did not. Um, so I have 30 seconds left in which to say, I think that's it. Folks, let this me get out of here. That, that, yeah, that was, yep, that's what it was. And uh, it illustrates total observation. I would not have missed that. There are different kinds of illusions. Be gentle with yourselves and other people and uh, spread the word to question everything, you know. All right.